afternoon. Well, I say afternoon, it's more like evening really. Um, I've been out this afternoon with Brosters who farm in Warrington, Cheshire, bordering into Lancashire. They go into Lancashire anyway. And uh, there's a fent lurking behind me here, suspiciously. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Brosters have quite a big business in terms of not necessarily acreage, although they're farming a couple of thousand acres of mostly cereals, some grass, but uh, they process green bin waste in your kitchen waste, what goes into your kitchen caddy. And basically they compost that or they process it into compost, which is quite a simple process in terms of you put it in a big pile and you let it heat up with its own bacterial breakdown and you keep it at temperature for a few hours, quite a few hours, and then it sanitizes it. Basically it becomes inert. And then what these guys do is spread it on their fields. Now it's rich in P and K, so phosphorus and magnesium. And just needs topping up with a bit of nitrogen, but uh, Anyway, so these guys grow a few cereals. I'm a bit sweaty, I've been running around. I've made my age old faux pas of running around, getting all hot and sweaty, and then picking up the camera to talk. So anyway, there, this is what I've come out to see mostly, really, is this CR890, driven by Dave Broster, uh, boss of the business. So this is a 21 plate machine that was bought as an ex-demonstrator from Malpas Tractors. I've got some footage which I'll put in this video of the machine that they got rid of for this CR, which was a CX880, which was a straw walker machine. Straw walker machine, they didn't like it. Uh, they have got a CR, another CR890, so comparing the straw walker to the rotary, we just didn't like the, the output of the straw walker machine. So the 890 was bought from Olpus and they got rid of the uh, CX, the straw walker machine. So the CR890 is third from the top in the range. So there's a 980, 990 and a 1090 above it, I think. It's got the FPT Cursor 11 engine, so it's an 11 litre engine. It's about just over 400 horsepower of, of uh, a power at rated speed. So the max it will go to 457 I think this engine but in a combine it doesn't rev at flat out where you would get the power in something like a tractor perhaps so it runs at 1400 rpm and so that's an 11 litre Fiat powertrain engine so, so the this New Holland is equipped with a smart tracks so the 24 inch tracks which equates to about three times more footprint than a 1050 tyre, which is mega, really. You very rarely see combines now that are big machines like this that are not on tracks, because in a dry season, they're great because they're smooth on bumps, 
in a wet season they're great because they keep your machine moving. Um, I think this is, I'm pretty sure this is a two wheel drive machine but she's on track so that makes the difference there. So the splashing lights are going, you can see the beacon splashing on the machine. That means the grain tank is nearly full. They usually flash when the tank's about 70% full and the driver knows that then he needs to empty the grain tank uh, because it'll tell him a little beeper will go in the cab. But the reason the beacons go off is to attract the attention of the grain trailer man. Okay, so we've got one of my favourite shots to grab here, which is my 360 camera on the end of the header, um, because it means you can look at the machine and then spin around and look at the header. Um, but what's going on here is uh, obviously a headland turn, but you can see uh, you can see the tracks pivoting on the ground there. That's quite interesting. Not notice that. But uh, what's going on? You can see the reciprocating knife at the front of the header there, and then as it goes into the crop, you can just see those reel we call it or sails I would typically know it as the part of the header which tips the corn into the auger which then allows it to feed into the into the machine into the center of the machine which goes up into the housing into the feeder housing which is a chain arrangement on this combine and then into the separation system which I've talked about I've got a little bit of an illustration on how that works uh, later on in the video but basically all this is doing is, is what I was doing by hand um, or will do by hand in a second I'll show you it's just separating the, the corn the, the wheat seeds from the stalk which we call straw and just threshing is basically what used to be done with sticks and the wind in the inner barn doorway uh, many generations of farmer ago um, so it, it, these machines although they are very sophisticated they're carrying out quite a simple task which is separating seeds from a plant yeah so because Dave's got a fairly high spec machine here He's using the IntelliSense, which is managing the output of the machine, measuring the load coming in and making adjustments to the machine's settings, forward speed to maximise the threshing. It's not a perfect, no combine is perfect. You don't get 100% wheat separated out. It's all a compromise and balancing off how many tons an hour you can cut versus how clean you want the sample and lots of other factors in between like crop readiness is the straw right if the straw isn't dead and it's green in the bottom that carries stuff over the back of the combine so you lose grain that way if it's very hard to thrash that makes it difficult because then you're smashing up the straw which is a valuable commodity so it's all a compromise of just getting a, a balance of what you're happy with how much you lose over the back of the combine how good the straw sample is how clean the crop sample in the grain tank is it's all a fine balancing act okay just lifting out of there end of the run here Dave's running 30 foot headers or 9 meter headers on the New Holland this is a very feed header so the knife can adjust fore and aft um, these are particularly useful in in lodged crops or flat crops so you can get the knife underneath the crop cut it before the reel gets hold of it because otherwise you end up pulling the crop out by its roots and then it blocks the knife blocks the header becomes a pain so 
These combines should see in between 40 and 50 tonnes an hour yield. Uh, New Holland set a record with the McDon header of 50 tonnes an hour, just over 50 tonnes an hour, but uh, the McDon headers are the Draper Flex headers, so they do give the combine slightly more output than a standard header. So this machine inside, it's got two big rotors. They're about 550 millimeters in diameter and about two and a half meters long. And they go from behind, behind the feeder housing, which is the bit that lifts the header up and down. Uh, behind that, there's a rotor which prepares the crop to go into the, it's, it's an impeller, I should say, it's an impeller. And that prepares the crop and it kind of divides it into two rows. So then that sends it down to each rotor. And then the rotors turn in towards the middle of the machine. And that's where the, the, the corn is separated. So the difference between this and combines that I would have driven going back quite a number of years now was that they were straw walker machines. And straw walkers are, they work, hang on a minute, I need to answer this. This is a two-hander, this is. So, a straw walker machine has got walkers inside that do this. And they walk, they're on an angle upwards and they've got teeth and they walk the straw up. But the trouble with straw walker machines is in heavy crops, they don't separate and you don't get the performance that you do out of a rotary machine. The compromise is straw quality. Now, because this crop is ripe and it's fit and it's good to harvest, the straw isn't bad. Uh, it's nice long strands there, so you can see where it's been cut at the end. You can see where the head was. There's a few heads here. That's part of the head there. And the aim of the game is to separate out the grains. So, wait there. So this is a head of wheat. That's, that's an unthrashed head. So what the combine is basically having to do is this. So, so then you, bits, the big bits go through, they get pushed out. And then the fan underneath the machine does this. And then you end up with a grain. So these are nice fat seeds, wheat to test yeah it's about 15% of that okay so Dave's cutting away and along comes uh, Dan his son to unload the combine into a trailer so you can see the strips cut out in the field here so Dave's using all of the functionality that this combine offers so guidance uh, IntelliSense um, adjustments but uh, the beauty of having guidance on a combine is that you don't have to judge the widths of the header. Once you've put your first cut around the outside, you can then cut in bouts, we would call it in the UK. So you can see the exact width of that strip fits in the header. So Dave can plan out his field and, and just aim where he wants to turn and the combine will know which width to cut at and where to cut. This is just a bit of a side on footage. You can see the volume of the crop going into the auger there, into the centre of the feeder housing. There's a lot of wheat going in there. Like four, four ton plus to the acres. Coming up behind the machine, you can see the, the chaff. And I, I'm trying to think of the correct word for the small, it's not a husk, it's, it's uh, it's almost like a, a little tiny petal that goes around the seeds in the head of the of the wheat plant but that's all the small particles that you can see um, flickering through the air uh, and wheat has a lot of chaff to separate out but it is quite an easy crop to, to separate it's just the volume of it because it is a high yielding crop winter wheat this is just 
can see above the wheel there, there's something moving back and forth. That's the sieve box. So inside the machine, there are a set of um, sieves, big sieves, massive. That's all the combine is, a big set of sieves. So the light particles, the chaff, gets blown out through the back because there's a big fan underneath and the seeds drop through the sieve. This is the older model combine that I was talking about where I've got uh, an illustration about the straw walker machine. Well this is the older straw walker machine. It's not an old machine, it is just, it's been replaced with the rotary because the, these guys prefer the rotary combine. But um, this is cutting a crop called OSR. I'm on board here with Dave in the cab of the uh, CX890. It's just emptying the uh, the grain bin and although it looks like it's quite slow um, you've got 12,000 litres of, of wheat in there so that's emptying out to over 120 litres a second into the trailer and then you can see daylight so it doesn't take long at all and then just just about make out the bubble up auger which brings the the crop from the machine inside so it, when it's emptying it doesn't stop nothing stops the machine keeps working separating the seeds from the stalks and there you can see the, the crop coming into the tank so you never actually fully empty these when you're unloading on the move you just uh, nearly empty the bin um, okay just turning around in the cab here and uh, I fluffed my camera position so it's, it's blown all the outside so you can't see what's going on outside but you can see what's going on inside so off to the right there you can see the big screen Dave's just making a few adjustments here and you've got a nice big screen which gives you all the information about what's going on in the combine you can see all the control functions there and the multifunction lever at the front as you can see it's all nice and clean nice and cool air-conditioned cab climate control uh, radio if you choose to listen he's just switched everything off there so he's uh, oh no back on sorry so it's getting ready to go into the next patch so here's a little infographic that New Holland I hope don't mind me using but you can see the rotors so this is a rotary combine as I've explained these are the rotors inside so you've got one small paddle at the front there which pushes the crop into the rotors and then there's the shaker box underneath and the sieves and there's the fan that blows all the chaff out underneath the or at the back of the combine. The big um, spinning drum on the side of the, of the machine there is to, uh, to keep the radiators clean so that, that's called a, um, a rotary sieve, uh, it's not a rotary sieve, what do we call it? Rotary filter we'll call it, let's go for that. But basically that stops um, all that chaff getting sucked into the radiator and there's a cleaning mechanism on, on that as well, like a little brush that, that just keeps that clean. This is some footage from the season before. So this is the um, rotary machine that's still in the fleet but it isn't the one that we've seen cutting wheat. And then off to the left there is the previous machine, the CX Combine, which is the straw walker machine, which I've explained about. Um, this is cutting a crop called oilseed rape, so the yellow flowers that you see in May, acres and acres of them, they produce a very small black seed, which you can squeeze for oil, which is used for cooking and food production, and also for um, biofuel as well, so like a biodiesel, if you like. This is uh, the same uh, the same field, just a slightly different angle. Both got the flashing lights on, so the grain bins must be getting full. But you can see on the front of these machines, there's, there's two vertical attachments on the header because OSR is, is a very stalky, tangly weed. It's not like a single stem that sticks up. Well, it is, but it's got lots of branches off it. So to stop that from tangling on the header, you need to cut it and cut a path through the crop. Here we are back on the uh, on the CX890. 
Um, just a nice little bit of footage here as you can see the crop just tipping into the header there with the sails just just touching it and throwing it in the divider doesn't need a knife on because it can just push through the stems of the of the wheat and here again you can see the straw dropping out so when the crop is nice and fit like this to cut um, the straw stays quite intact with the rotary machine and in the northwest of England that straw is typically going to be used in the livestock farming sector so it's going to be baled and used for bedding uh, in other parts of the country southeast and you know across in Lincolnshire you might get it used for for um, power stations so it'll get baled up and, and burnt in uh, in uh, old-fashioned power stations that used to use coal You just see the smart tracks here so the the new holland and case arrangement is basically you put a toothed gear at the top where the wheel would have fitted normally on a on a combine so the reduction is is just the same up at the top and then you've got the track arrangement in this triangle formation underneath um, which is different to the class system which is a flat track which has a big wheel at either end one of which is driven and then you don't have that above that wheel above the track. Okay, just to round off this, uh, I'm just going to put a bit of footage that I've gathered of these guys working over the last couple of seasons. Um, this was an evening where everything sort of came together, but the weather was coming and going to change. It, it forecast rain for the next day. Every baler and piece of loading equipment on the on the place uh, came out this evening so the, the four string um, John Deere L1531 then two uh, John Deere belt balers um, this is another part of the Broster business is, is producing um, hay and haylage for the yeah, horse trade basically um, I think those bales will be getting wrapped because they were short ones, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, it was a full field of fence, look at all those bales, brilliant evening. And just a bit of footage of um, the, the drilling operation as well. So this is sowing um, spring crop, I think it was, straight into uh, into plowing with the Vardastad Rapid and Fent 930. It's a set of uh, 900 mil wide rear tyres on this for drilling. Um, Travelling superbly well. Nice bit of dust, perfect conditions. This is in Lancashire, so heading towards Wigan direction, so this is some of their furthest away land. They'd already been um, spread with compost and ploughed. And last bit of kit, um, which I always find impressive, is the Agrifac sprayer. This has got 42 meter booms on it, it's a monster. This was brought um, pre-owned up from, from a farm in Shropshire and uh, so they, they didn't have an option about the, uh, the boom width so it came with what it came with but uh, it just covers an unbelievable amount of, of land. Um, but you can see the width of the machine and, and uh, how much you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. I was just wondering if I noticed if it slows down on one side here, if there's a section control or not, but I don't know, I'll have to ask that question. Um, but yeah, this is uh, some of the, the crops. They were spraying a product on the, the cereals to retain protein 
levels so hopefully this crop was going to go off to be um, milling wheat for bread you know top grade milling wheat um, but to pass the muster you need it needs to have a certain protein level in it so this this crop was uh, to retain protein this spray was to retain the protein keep it in the in the seeds Okay, as usual, uh, comment, rate, and subscribe. If anything, subscribe. <laughs> I've been a bit lazy with my videos since Christmas, but um, I've started a new job. So I'm working with, uh, I've, I'm answerable now, my, my day. I can't uh, just uh, do what I want during my days now um, and fit my freelancing work because I, I'm no longer a freelancer as such. So uh, this is uh, going to become a a weekend and evening activity doing my uh, YouTube content so it might be a little bit more sporadic I tried to get into a monthly routine with it last year but uh, best intentions and all that anyway comment, rate and subscribe thank you, bye bye